Washington, D.C. is an aviation lover's dream with one of the most unique international airports and not one, but two incredible air and space museums. Our nation's capital will impress any AvGeek. Now let's get started. Hey everyone, Andy and Trey. We're here at the Udvar Hazy Center, nearby to Washington Dulles International Airport, where we're going to take you on a tour of some of the world's most famous airplanes. But first, let's head to the district to explore the Smithsonian's flagship National Air and Space Museum, located on the National Mall. It's the largest of the Smithsonian's 21 museums. And be sure to stick around until the end of this video, and we'll tell you everything you need to know to plan your visit. Today, we're meeting up with our tour guide, Christopher, to get an even more in-depth history of flight and space exploration than on our previous visits. With the world's largest and most significant collection of aviation and space artifacts, we definitely learn something new every time. Upon entry, don't rush past the Star Trek Spaceship Enterprise studio model, which fires up at the top of every hour. Next, try to avoid the temptation of the central hangar and make your way to the History of Flight exhibit. Here, you'll learn all about the Wright brothers and see the world's first airplane, their 1903 Wright Flyer. While many reproductions have been made, this is the original airplane flown by the brothers in Kitty Hawk in 1903. Just 66 years after the Wright's first flight, humans walked on the moon. To symbolically link the first airplane flight with putting a man on the moon, a small piece of wood, a spruce from the 1903 Wright Flyer, was taken by Neil Armstrong to the moon on Apollo 11. It was placed underneath the flag on his shoulder on a spacesuit. We definitely would have missed this fascinating fact without our amazing guide. Other don't miss highlights from the museum include the Apollo 11 command module, Columbia, which was the living quarters for the three person crew for the first lunar landing mission in 1969. Returning to aviation, the museum proudly displays the Spirit of St. Louis flown by Charles Lindbergh on the first solo nonstop transatlantic flight in 1927. We also enjoy the many interactive exhibits like the Ford Trimotor vibrating platform and exploring the nose section of a massive former Northwest Airlines Boeing 747. You can also walk an entire Douglas DC-7, which was introduced by American Airlines on its New York to Los Angeles route in 1953. It's pretty cool to see the cockpit and how spacious the cabin was for passengers on such a small airplane. For thousands more aviation and space artifacts, we highly recommend a visit to the Udvar Hazy Center next. This annex houses the world's fastest jet aircraft. Lockheed's SR-71 Blackbird can reach speeds of Mach 3.3, which is over 2,000 miles per hour. You'll also find an Air France Concorde, which has a maximum cruising speed of Mach 2, or about 1,300 miles per hour. Another highlight of this location is the incredible Space Shuttle Discovery. Unfortunately, we didn't find many interactive exhibits here or any planes that we could go inside. Saving the best for last, one of our favorite highlights to end our visit to the Udvar Hazy Center is access to the Observation Tower. From here, you get a bird's eye view of Dulles International Airport and can watch planes taking off and landing. We also enjoy the ability to simultaneously listen to the control tower. Overall, we would recommend visiting the flagship location first and then adding the annex if time permits. For logistics, the flagship National Air and Space Museum is located on the National Mall, but the only public entrance is on the other side on Independence Avenue at 6th Street. Please note, you will pass through the airport-style screening on entry. The museum is open every day except Christmas from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. As one of the most popular museums in the world, you must reserve your free timed entry passes online ahead of time. Note passes are released in six-week blocks. 
a number of same-day passes are released every morning at 8.30 a.m. Alternatively, you can book the informative guided tour we took today if passes are sold out or if you prefer a curated experience to get the most out of your visit like us. You'll learn lots of interesting facts that you may overlook on your own exploring this overwhelming museum with over 60,000 artifacts. Either way, we'll drop links to both options in the description below. Also, we recommend taking the metro to L'Enfant Plaza, which is the closest metro stop. On that note, it's easy to take the metro to both Reagan National Airport and Dulles International Airport. For the Udvar Hazy Center, or annex at Dulles, you can take the metro to Innovation Station and then transfer to the 983 bus. This is the same bus to take to get to the museum if you have a long layover at Dulles. Alternatively, an Uber from Innovation Station costs around $10. And thankfully, you do not need time tickets in advance at the Annex location. Entrance is free, hours are the same as the flagship location, so daily, except Christmas, from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., and they even have free lockers to store your luggage, which is super helpful. Before we leave you, here's a cool takeoff simulation on an Airbus A320 at Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport. Well, that's it for our special on aviation here in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for joining us. If you liked today's video, do us a favor and smash that like button for the almighty YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing to our channel. We also want to thank our channel members. We greatly appreciate your support. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next adventure.